So in this video we're going to be showing you a system that I've set up to cool our solar panels on our roof. Uh, it's a domestic system, 5 kilowatt nominally, uh, and that's the issue. 5 kilowatts is the rated power at 25 degrees Celsius, which in the Australian summer is not something you actually ever have. Um, solar panels deteriorate in performance uh, for every degree. Um, they go above 25 degrees. In the summer, I mean, the other day we had 44 degrees here in Perth, uh, the panels could get up to 70 or 80 degrees Celsius, so the performance drops by up to 20%. Um, so what I've set up is a, a cooling system with some water sprays, uh, an automated system that only switches on when it needs to, using some little tiny pumps, minimise the electrical load, and collecting the water as much as possible to avoid the water consumption that you would, you would need if you were draining all that water. Uh, so let's go through the system now. First up we've got the, uh, the power supply for the whole thing. So this here is a little uh, 12 volt uh, supply. Uh, that supplies electrical power to the pumps and to the temperature switches up on the roof. Not the best cable routing but one of these days I'll optimise it a bit more. Um, so the water supply to the roof down here, just a manifold off the tap. The green line there comes into a water filter here. This water filter is a big chunky one, it's one of those big 20 inch, um, they call them the big blue water filters. Uh, you might, you probably wouldn't notice there, but I've actually hooked it up in reverse. reason for that, so is what's inside it. So inside there you would normally have, you know, a, a polyethylene filter for sediment or a, a carbon filter for, for the taste. Uh, here what we've got is an empty cartridge inside that we've filled up with this special resin. This resin is a water softening resin, Purolite 100C. And what that does is it uh, loves swapping over its cations, so either with sodium, which is what it naturally comes with, uh, so the calcium and the magnesium in the water is swapped over with sodium. So why have we done that? Well, I tried running the system on uh, straight tap water and within a couple of days the panels were white with scale. The scales, the calcium carbonate, magnesium carbonate that crystallise out on the, on the panels and is pretty much hard to, hard to remove unless you get some acid on it. Um, so one option, so this thing will fill up pretty quickly with, with the calcium and magnesium. Our water is pretty hard here uh, to regenerate the resin so you don't have to throw it away and get some more resin. You just backwash it, so I've got a, a backwash line here that will end up setting up with a, a recirc pump. Um, you can either backwash it with salt water, so just with you know a, a tank full of salt uh, and a bit of water, and that swaps over all the calcium and the magnesium that's loaded up onto the resin. Or alternatively, you can you can backwash it, and this is probably what I'm going to do instead with uh, you know dilute strength hydrochloric acid. Uh, it sounds nasty, but the chloride doesn't end up going on your roof. What happens is the, the protons in the hydrochloric acid swap over for the calcium and the magnesium once it's full, and then you've got the resin with protons on them. Uh, when the water goes on the roof, uh, the protons and the carbonate neutralize each other, and then you've got CO2 coming off and pretty much pure water. So that's a, that's a nice little system. Otherwise, if you've got the sodium exchanging, you end up with sodium carbonate. That's not so much of a big deal because sodium carbonate is really water soluble, so you end up, you know, you still don't get much. But you might, you might see some, you know, some stuff crystallizing out, but it'll just wash off with water. But anyway, that's the water supply. It's just a standard, you know, garden fitting hose. That's a pressure limiting valve. That's at uh, 600 kPa. So that just make sure if you end up with a higher pressure in the in the system, you don't explode your tank. This is a this is always under pressure. Uh, this just comes out. As I said, I've got a. Well, this is if I felt like having some soft water for, you know, the the coffee machine in the house uh, or wherever else, or also for backwashing. Uh, so that line there, you can isolate it here, of course. That goes up onto the roof. So let's go and have a bit of a visit. See what goes on up there. All right, up the ladder. So here goes the water line up onto the roof. So, what have we here? So we've got 20 panels. This is 10 on one side of the house and there's 10 just over the other side over there. Um, the water line that comes up, I had an option here to go straight into the, the uh, sprays there, but alternatively it comes off on a branch through there and into this tank there. So this tank is a head tank. Um, this is the water supply. 
Notice I've got the valve not fully open. Uh, reason for that is the pressure in this line is actually really high. Um, so, let me open it up, see what's inside. Um, you'll see there's a float valve there. This so is just like a toilet cistern valve. When it's down, uh, it flows. Problem is, if this is fully open and the pressure's really high, this tank, because it's a bit wobbly, the water level oscillates and you end up with water hammer and this, this line just starts vibrating like crazy. So, similar thing. This this here is the branch that goes off to the other side of the roof. So it has there's another tank with another float valve and that just keeps it full. So, the idea here is you've got, um, so there's a drain point coming back there. So all the water that comes down the panels gets collected in this line here and just by gravity it flows back into the tank here. Just got this to make sure it doesn't come out. Um, this line is a suction line, so I've got it away from the bottom of the, the tank. Don't want to have it touching the bottom because there's probably all sorts of crud in there. You don't want to be suck, sucking, um, you know, particles. Uh, but there is a strainer here. This is just a little basket strainer um, that takes out any, uh, any you know, plastic shavings and stuff from when I was drilling holes in this tank that otherwise would go up and fill those nozzles and then the thing wouldn't be running well at all. So put that back on, just so, you know, mozzies don't get in there. Right, next thing, this here, this is the pump. So, not the, uh, not the most engineeringly sound, uh, you know, waterproofing vessel, but it does the job. Little plastic tub. So, first thing you notice, it's tiny. It's a little four liter a minute pump. It's a 12 volt. Uh, 80 psi which is five and a half bar so that's a pretty decent pressure um, you know that that you can when it's running you can try and stop the flow with your with your finger and you, you won't be able to it's really high pressure um, you know these things are about twenty dollars so real cheap um, if you stuff them up get another one no worries um, isolation switch here just in case I want to turn off one side of the system just see how the other side's still running the the way that I've connected it up is a bit is a bit strange, you know. It's it's because that goes over to the to that box over there, and in there there's a temperature switch, and that will enable or disable power to this pump. So the suction line, you know, here it's this sort of dodgy tubing connection because it's a smaller line, and that scoots off to the panels there. All right, so let's close that up. So it's pretty early in the morning, it's an overcast day, so there's no water running. This thing's in full, full auto all the time. Uh, let's have a look at the panels themselves. You can see there's still a bit of scale there that's on the on the panels. If I wipe it, it's coming off quite well now. Um, I put a bit of CLR in the in the water tank yesterday to try and clear it up. I had some problems with the with the filter in the early stages. Um, reason was I connected it the right, the, you know, the normal way of connecting it. And what happens is that um, when the, the water flows, uh, you want the, the, the water to flow down through the resin bed rather than up through the resin bed. And that compacts the bed, and makes sure there's no channeling, so you get really good efficiency in removing all of the hardness from the water. All right, let's have a look at how it's all connected up. Um, tubing, you know, it's pretty soft, so just routing it around, you need to, you need to clamp it to something, so, Otherwise you get kinks. You know, I tried before just having it running under there, but you get this bending and yeah, so I've done it properly with some, some nice elbows. Um, it's clamped up with pieces of pine uh, with, you know, this is just a nailed uh, U-shape thing, typical for retics, and then clamped down with some, uh, some G-clamps here. Um, that keeps it all nice in the right positions. Um, if we look at the sprays themselves, uh, they're on, Rises uh, that are only half height. Um, that means that the spray doesn't go too high. Um, keeps the, the water on the panels themselves. See, so it just goes all the way around, you know, all the way around that way as well. All right, let's go and switch it on. Look at the, term, the temperature switch. So, uh, temperature switch in here. We've got. Here, about seven bucks off eBay, nice and cheap. So that says 26.6. It's flashing because iPhone phone captures at a different frequency to the display. But uh, yeah, 26.6 degrees. So I've set it at 35, 
with a three degree delta. So that means it'll switch on at 38 and it'll switch off when it gets back down to 35. So it's not gonna run for quite a while today. But let's just say we wanna run at 20. So switch that down to 20, or 20, yeah, 20, why not? Set, and then you hear the pump kick in. So why is that? We've got this thermocouple here that comes out of there that just senses the temperature at that point there. There's a little probe. Let's see just here. And now you can see that the sprays are going. Uh, you know, they're just 180 degrees, one per panel, nice and even. The water drains down, collects at the bottom. Um, so a suggestion I had by a mate yesterday was, you can see down here, it's kind of dribbling in, you know, not in, in sort of straight lines and it misses. What you really want is to bead really well and not have any um, any bits of the panel that, that get missed. So I'm thinking probably coating the panels in a special, uh, special, you know, I don't know what it is exactly, but it, it makes the water bead better. Um, and that'll get more even cover with the water, more efficient cooling. I'll turn that off, we don't really need that running now. Set, back up to 35, and then it switches off. Right, so on the other side of the house, same thing, but so there's the water supply, power supply, same deal. Got panels there, clamps again, another temperature switch here. Um, Drain points, so there's more drain points here. We've got this whole channel there. It gets collected at that point there. Um, this channel here collects at that point there. So I've got a little, the end of a one litre container here. Uh, the hose just gets clamped on nicely under there. You probably can't see it. Um, this here, I wanted to, so you want to have that sitting on the top there. It's quite tricky to get it to all sit neatly. Anyway. Another thermocouple, as you can see on that panel over there. And then finally, on the roof of our garage, you've got another secondary tank there with the collection lines that all drain back into it, and another pump in that tank there. And that's the whole project. So in terms of performance, um, on that 44 degree day that I mentioned, we had uh, maximum power generation of 3.8 kilowatts. Uh, when this system's all running nicely, um, we get up to 4.8 kilowatts. So typically we'll have three to four extra kilowatt hours per day. Um, so let's say it's four, you know, 40 odd cents, if we're actually using it, $1.60 a day. Um, the water, uh, well, the water consumption, when this is running right on a really hot day, uh, it averages about 50, uh, sorry, half a litre a minute. Um, you know, it's a fair bit of water still, I reckon I can do better. Uh, as you see in there, there's there's gaps. Water that goes through there doesn't get collected, so um, a bit of water drains out onto the roof. I'll definitely fix that up. I've just got to get some carbonate sheeting underneath or close up those gaps with something. We'll, we'll optimise it even more. I mean, really, when these panels are cooled, there's not all that much evaporation going on, so steady state, there's not much water loss. It's really only drift loss onto the roof that you want to try and minimise, and then the whole thing's going to be efficient as anything. Um, so the power on the pumps, uh, as I said, they were like 3 amps on 12, so 30, 30 or 40 watts each. Um, so maximum you know, 80 watts. Um, when, you're, when you're getting back 1,000 watts, uh, the whole system's pretty much worthwhile. In terms of the cost of the components, it's really the water filter that was the most expensive. You could run it on rainwater if you had a rainwater system big enough to handle it, but I mean, during summer there's not much rain here. We don't have a rainwater tank here, um, but you could look at doing something like that and avoid the, the cost of doing the water filtration. Anyway, that's it. Thank you.